So imagine this, you are out there fishing, you have hooked a giant bass. You're fighting it in, the fight's going well, the fish, it's still hooked. And so you think to yourself, I'm gonna catch this fish. That fish gets to the bank, it takes a big jump, starts shaking its mouth, and you say, don't get off, don't get off, don't get off, and it doesn't. You're still fighting that fish, and it comes up one more time, shaking its head, maybe it makes a really hard nose dive down to the bottom, and then all of a sudden, that fish is gone. Whether it shook your lure out of its mouth on a crazy jump or broke your line on a hard nose dive, something went wrong and you think to yourself, what could I have done as an angler to mitigate that issue, to make sure that didn't happen, that I catch the big bass instead of losing it, that I have success rather than failure? Well, in most scenarios, the one thing you can do to almost always land that fish when it's close to the boat or close to the bank is boat flip it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh! The more you get into bass fishing and the more content that you watch, you're going to see that most anglers for most size bass out there are going to be doing what's called a boat flip or what I'm going to call kind of the category of flipping that fish into the boat, onto the bank, into your kayak. That is the technique that most good anglers use to perfectly land most fish. So what are the best practices for boat flipping a bass? In this video, we're going to touch on the top three tips that I have for boat flipping a bass. My name's Tyler and let's talk about it. Well, how's it going everybody? And welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. My goal here on this channel is to help you guys become better bass anglers with every single video that I make, whether you're a bass boat angler, kayak angler, bank beater, or anything in between, my videos are for you guys. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, hit that subscribe button to join Team TRF. Now, I love doing very technique specific videos on this channel that can apply to the majority of you guys out there. And this one I feel like applies to every single angler, no matter your skill level, no matter where you fish, and of course, no matter matter what species of bass you fish for, and heck, this can even apply to catfish, white bass, stripers, really any type of fish is a fish that is able to be boat flipped. Now the biggest issue we're going to attempt to cover and thus fix in this video is going to be breaking your equipment. When you boat flip or bank flip a bass, it is possible to break your rod, which is a big deal, we don't want to do that, or to break your line, which is less a big deal, but of course you lose the fish in either situation. So we want to completely get rid of that by teaching you guys the three best practices for boat flipping a bass. Now when it comes to breaking your rods, there's a video out there by a buddy of mine named Tyler at Bass Fishing HQ, a really awesome channel that y'all will actually see some collaborations with here on TRF and on his channel very soon. And he's done a video on kind of the top reasons why people end up breaking their rods. One of the tips he goes over is that you boat flip it wrong. And so I'm gonna take that tip that he talks about in this video and really extrapolate it and show you guys the best way to boat flip and the worst ways to boat flip. And as I said, the term boat flip has the word boat in it, but it doesn't just apply to boat fishing. It applies to you guys on the bank as well. And as a matter of fact, I'll show some bank flips here at the end of the video. Now, a main theme that you want to figure out before you even set the hook on a fish is, can I boat flip or bank flip a fish using the gear that I have? So the rod, the reel, the line, the lure, and of course, the fish size. Can all that come together to equal success with a boat flip or failure? And we're going to talk about all those conditions. First of which being the fish's weight. In my experience, I've never boat flipped anything over six and a half pounds, and you probably shouldn't. As a matter of fact, the one in this thumbnail and the one you'll see here in this video, that was six and a half pounds, I definitely should not have boat flipped that fish, especially with the gear that I had. It was a 6'10", medium heavy, 15 pound fluorocarbon. I had been fishing in brush all day, the line was frayed. Everything was not lining up to have a successful boat flip, but somehow it got in the boat. In that scenario, I normally would not boat flip a fish of that size. So anything over six pounds, get your hand down there, lip that fish, use the net. That's where you're going to find the most success with landing those fish. But anything under six pounds, you can generally boat flip a fish of that size. So let's say that you have a three pounder hooked. Can you boat flip that fish? Well, there's two different lure types. There are single hook lures. We're talking about your jigs, Texas rigs, uh, you know, soft plastics. That's going to be your single hook. And then you have your treble hook lures. So single hook, 100% of the time you can boat flip unless of course you see that fish is maybe barely hooked with a little bit of skin on the, on the inside of the mouth. Maybe then you should have a little more caution before you boat flip it. So almost 100% of the time you can boat flip a fish on a single hooked lure. But a treble hooked lure, 
I would say it's kind of a case by case basis. Sometimes you're gonna be able to boat flip with a treble hooked lure, sometimes you're not. Again, it all depends on how well you see that fish hooked, and especially if that fish is jumping near the boat, you're gonna to wanna to use one of those jumps to get that fish in the boat because fish love to shake off a crankbait, treble hook, topwater lure uh, close to the boat. And so if you can use a, a boat flip technique, you're gonna get that fish in the boat the majority of the time. So once you've assessed the situation and realized that you can boat flip a bass that you have hooked, the top three things that I'm gonna tell you guys when boat flipping a fish to find success are going to be momentum, consistency in pressure, and hand placement. Those three things, if you do them all correctly and in the correct order, you're going to find success with landing the fish and not breaking your equipment. The two things that we're trying to find out how to do well in this video. So what do I mean by momentum? What I mean by that is that you want the fish to be moving towards you or in one direction, whether left or right. I'm talking if you're, if you're standing here on the bank or on the boat, you want the fish moving in a consistent direction at a consistent speed so you can use that momentum with your rod to flip that fish either into the boat or onto the bank. You do not want to go against the momentum of the fish. When that fish is in control, that fish is going to be taking dives, gonna be jumping up in the air, it's gonna be going left and right, taking drag out, especially on a spinning rod. Boat flipping is usually not recommended on a spinning rod. Um, but when you have a fish that's in control, you don't have control of the momentum. But you wanna make sure, if possible, you can get that fish moving in one direction then use that fish's momentum to lift it up into the boat or on the bank. Momentum is the most important thing because if you have a fish that's you're fighting it in and then all of a sudden you think it's time to boat flip that fish and it decides, no, uh, uh not today, and it takes a dive, but you've already began the process of lifting your rod tip, that's gonna be two forces acting in opposite directions, which will cause your rod, well hopefully not your rod first, hopefully your line first, but it can cause your rod to break or at least fracture or, or weaken in some way. And we want to avoid that completely. So just use the fish's momentum to the best of your abilities. And we'll have tons of examples of that throughout the rest of this video. The second piece of advice that I have is consistency in pressure. And that kind of goes right along with momentum in that when you are fighting that fish, uh, it really goes for the whole fight, not just the boat flip. You don't wanna be setting the hook hard and then giving it slack, and then setting the hook hard and then giving it slack, and then setting the hook hard. You wanna set the hook once to get the hook in that fish's mouth, and then you wanna have a consistent pressure all the way in. And if that fish fights near the boat, you wanna make sure that you are lowering your rod tip, maybe uh, loosening your drag. That way that fish has a consistent amount of pressure, so you're not gonna break your rod or your line. And then the biggest thing when it comes to boat flipping a fish to have consistency and pressure is that when you go to grab your rod and lift up, you want to use a consistent amount of pressure when you're lifting your rod up to slowly heave that fish into the boat or onto the bank. That's the second most important thing. And the third most important thing is going to be hand position. Let's say that you're using a standard bait casting reel like I am right here. I don't know if the screen flips it or not, but I have my left hand on the reel and the rod. My right hand is used to reel. So let's say that I cast out there, catch a fish, I'm reeling it in. I'm never going to move my left hand off of this position right here. I'm just gonna move my right hand from the reel handle somewhere along this first stretch of rod up until the first guide. A problem I see, especially high school kids out there, I've literally watched them break their rods before as they boat flip because they keep their rod in their left hand, that's great. But they go to flip the fish in and they grab it sometimes by like the fourth or fifth guide up. So the only part that you actually have bending on the rod is going to be the last part of the rod. And because most bass fishing rods nowadays are a parabolic action, that means they are designed to bend from all the way back here to the tip. From the, where the reel is to the tip, that's where they are designed to bend. It is a parabolic action. And so if you put your, 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 your left hand on the reel, your right hand up here, and again, it's flipped if you're using a left hand retrieve bait caster. You put your, your hand all the way up here, this whole section right here is completely stable. And a parabolic action rod wants to bend all the way down this entire section. So you are causing a lot more stress on the, the top of your rod, the top guides, and it is not designed for that kind of stress. And so hand placement is very important when boat flipping a bass, and you will see that in all of the fish catches. I'm sure I'm using them as B-roll right now and at the end of this video. And one bonus tip that I just remembered is that kind of going along with momentum and consistency and pressure, you do not want to ever 
boat flip straight up. So let me zoom out real quick so I can show you guys. So if I have a fish hooked right now, I'm fighting him, the fish gets basically underneath the boat or, or right at the bank that I'm fishing on, you never want to, I see it happen all the time, even on like Bill Dance TV shows, you see them hold constant pressure with that fish sitting there, its mouth is gaping wide open, which first of all is a great way to quickly lose a fish, but you especially don't want to let that fish do that and then pull straight up. Sure, it allows you to have consistency and pressure, but that rod is never designed to bend the rod tip back toward the reel. That's what's called a negative angle. Nick the Informative Fisherman and Tyler Berger taught me that. And so it's just natural for a rod to bend throughout the entirety of the rod. You never want that rod tip right here to bend back down straight towards the, the butt of the rod. That The rods are just not meant to do that. And that's exactly what's happening when you are lifting straight up like this, because you're gonna have to heave that fish into the boat like this, which is gonna mean that your fish is hanging like my, my vibrating jig and it's pulling straight down on the rod tip, and that is a very easy and quick way to break the tip off your rod. Again, you wanna use all these things together, momentum, consistency and pressure, and using the right hand position to lift that fish into the boat. Now, the last thing that I wanna to touch on is going to be that there's two different types of boat flips. There is what I call a major league fishing style boat flip, and there's a traditional boat flip. So a traditional boat flip is you're fighting the fish in, you use the minimum amount of, of, of consistent pressure and momentum to get that fish just over the gunnel of the boat and, and softly land on your boat deck. That's going to be a traditional boat flip. And the second boat flip is a major league fishing boat flip. That's where you're going to flip the fish in and you're going to kind of readjust your hands. So you'll flip with, like I said, with your left hand on the reel, the right hand here. And as soon as that fish is kind of up in the air with a little more power, as we'll talk about, you switch your hands to where your left hand leaves the reel and grabs the rod right where your right hand was, and then your right hand grabs the line where that fish is or grabs the fish by the pressure points. This one definitely takes a lot more skill to do, and if you wanna see a really good example of how to do this MLF style of boat flipping, of course, you can watch Major League Fishing's live stream anytime throughout the season or really any Major League Fishing YouTube video or replay. They are not allowed to boat flip the traditional way by touching the fish to the carpet. That's called a fish landing violation. Oh my gosh, right next to the boat. No. Wow, fish that is awesome. Cow. I have never How seen that. How about that? that? Nope. It, it climbed up on the trolling boat. That's going to be a flagrant fish landing violation. What do you mean? So they have learned the best possible ways to almost always without fail, boat flip a fish and grab it by the line, as you'll see me do here in a second on the water. And when it comes to fish sizes on those two styles of boat flip, I rarely ever do the MLF style on anything over two and a half pounds. That's kind of the maximum that I have for grabbing the line. I just don't feel comfortable doing it with anything over two and a half pounds. But of course you and I are not majorly fishing bass pro tour anglers. And so we can use the traditional boat flip, which even if it is a fish under uh, two and a half pounds, sometimes I will use the traditional. And if done correctly, you can easily get that fish over the gunnel, softly land it on the boat deck, and then I keep a little bit of pressure on that line to kind of keep that fish's head up. By doing this properly, you have the least harm to the fish as well as the least harm to your gear. And you're gonna see tons of examples of this throughout the rest of the video. So I hope none of this stuff confused you guys. I know that boat flipping you wouldn't think is necessarily a complex technique, but if you're not doing it right, you're going to break your rod, you're gonna break your line, and you're gonna blame the rod manufacturer when it's not their fault, it's your fault. So by watching this video and implementing everything that I've taught, you guys can properly boat flip your bass. Don't go anywhere though, we have some awesome fish catches here at the end of the video and showing in action exactly what I'm talking about by using momentum, consistency and pressure and hand placement to do both types of boat flips, the MLF style and the traditional. My name is Tyler and we'll see you guys right now on the water. Okay, I got him that time. Alrighty, so fighting him in, we're gonna bring him around, put one hand here and flip him in as we had the momentum going around the boat just like that. And as you saw, I kind of keep one hand on keep a little bit of pressure on my line here. That way he's just barely touching the carpet that I can grab him by the lip. And that is it right there. There he is, bring him in. Now, gonna play him slowly, making a run towards me right now, flip him in and grab the line. That's an example of MLF type boat flip where I get him up in the air 
that would be, that that kind of flip would be too much if it was big and I wanted him to kind of nicely land on the carpet. But that one I wanted to grab the line, so I flipped it up, grabbed the line without getting that rod tip at a negative angle where it could break. There's one little guy fighting him in. I'm gonna ski him across the top of the water, just like this. Boat flip him in, grab the line, just like that, boys and girls. It is nice and easy. No need to break rods. No need to hurt the fish. It is a nice, simple, smooth process that you guys can learn for yourselves. There's one. Hey, hey, okay, here we go. Here we go. Show you guys in action. It's going to be a MLF boat flip. Fish is jumping. Again, momentum is. Switch hands. Boom. That right there, folks, is how it's done. There's one open. He's barely, he is barely hooked. So, oh my gosh, they fight so strong in here. Oh, he is barely hooked. He's got some grass on him. And so, we are actually not going to boat flip this fish. We're going to get down there and we're going to lip him because he's only got a tiny bit of a hook in him. And again, it, it takes that, that mid, mid, mid uh, fight analysis to know I could not have boat flipped that fish. Now maybe when I go to get the hook out, I'll notice he was better hooked than I thought. And yeah, he was better hooked. But by seeing a hook outside the body like that, okay, maybe that pops right out. I might not have been able to get the right angle to properly boat flip that fish. And I might not have broken my equipment, but that is a fish that is easily lost. So I'm glad we didn't. I'm glad we took it slow. And I went down and lipped that fish. Got him, there we go. Alrighty, oh, he's fighting hard. Perfect boat flip, perfect execution, and again, that fish was not getting off. He was good to boat flip because he was on a single hooked lure. And it's just the best way to get fish in the boat or on the bank. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. Yes. Look at this fish. One on the frog. Get in here. Yes. Holy cow. Oh, gosh. Uh -oh. Did I lose him? No, I still got him. Holy cow. There's another one with him. Got him. No, dang it. Eat it. Eat it. Got him. Got two. I got two. What do I do? What do I do? I got one the trolling motor and one. Okay, we got two now. Um, I am going to boat flip. Oh my gosh. I'm going to boat flip this one. Thank you, buddy. Chill out right there, please, for me. And we're going to get this one in the boat. Even bigger. Yes, baby! Woo! Okay. Wow, that was one of the most hectic things I've had happen to me in a long time. Oh my gosh. We had like four fish trying to get the swim bait out of this one's mouth. Lost the first time I tried for two, got the second time. That was nuts. I'm out of breath. Who knew fishing could do that to you? All right, hook out of the first one, or second one. Thank you, buddy. Treble hook, let's get pliers here. Out of the first, and that right there, folks is two more bass to add to my clicker for 793 on the year. You know what? That's how we're gonna end the video right there. I may even use that one in a different video. If y'all enjoyed, hit the subscribe button. That right there is how you not only boat flip one, but two, and keep them both on, zero broken rods. Again, if you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button. I'm very grateful that I get to do this for a living, that I get to experience catching two fish at once on camera for you guys. What a gosh dang time. We'll see you next time here on TRF.